Welcome back, everybody. What a banger of a match. Stats versus Dark was, if, if you're just tuning in or if you're watching the bot and you skip the first match, you're like, oh, it's Dark versus Stats. I mean, what, what, how possibly, how good could it possibly be? Go back and watch it because that might be the best GSL series we get this year. That was phenomenal play from Stats and going up against one of the best Zergs in the world, in my opinion, the best Korean Zerg by a long shot. I mean, what an underdog yeah. story. It was beautiful play. You we could talk about that series for, for so long. Like, that was just absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. We were like, talking about it the entire no, break. No, yeah, it's like, there's, wow. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> just go back and watch it, if yeah. you did not. It's just, it was an if, incredible series. If you already watched it, go back and watch Do it, it again. Do it again, <laughs> yes. Relive it right now. Just kidding, no. Uh, Classic versus Bunny is going to be our next match here. Going into a PDT. <laughs> Bunny. Please buff Terran. I love it. <laughs> I mean, this also has a chance to be a really good PBT. You know, on paper, I think I give Bunny a little bit of an edge here just because he's been quietly so consistent and so good. And TVP has been one of his better matchups, although I do kind of think of him as more of a well-rounded Terran as opposed to Kira, who, I mean, I just have that guy locked into my mind as just the TVP killer, <laughs> right? But classic. He has been showing some pretty good form recently, I must say. It was kind of a surprise that he didn't qualify for IEM. I was so surprised He got surprised so that. close. He got one map win away playing on the European server, and I can't imagine how much ping he had and when he had to play that one. Yeah. He ended up losing to Scalus, but like American was... server, Korean server, European server, he played all the qualifiers, wasn't quite able to do it, but let me tell you, this guy is really good. I think he's going to have a stellar year. Let's see what we got in store for us. Classic versus Bunny here. Group B, match two. Bottom left, the blue Protoss player, classic. And then the camera does like turn and zooms in, looks very <laughs> professional. And in the bottom right, it's Buddy. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so sad. You gotta flip, flip the sign. I can't read it. Oh I can't my read God. the sign. What? What do you? Come on. What, what does it say? It's, it's a face shield. I want to know. <laughs> it's Show a, it to me. <laughs> it's a face shield. Oh. I'm so curious actually now. Wow. Aha. Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. I don't know who those people are. Yeah, so many people coming down to the studio. I always love having a live audience. It was really a sad time during the pandemic. And that one season where me and Tasis were kind of like in a, I don't even know what I would call it. We're just like in a chamber separated from all society <laughs> or like a green screen. <laughs> that room was so small that we were locked into. Oh my God. <laughs> we just I remember, show up I remember that. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to black it out of my mind, You're but just it in is a locker in the dungeon of the Afrika <laughs> Studio. Basically, but it is so good to be back here and have a live audience. Thank you guys for coming down to the studio. Yeah, I mean, this game specifically that we're going into as well, though, is hopefully going to be better than. I mean, if it's better than the last one, then that's just like insane. But it's gonna be if a it good even day. matches it, then you know I'll take that. That's totally fine. But. Uh, Bunny here on the bottom is actually going to go for a bit of a cheeky opener here. He yeah. went for a one base wall off, so he's completely denied the scout into the main there with that double depot. Mm -hmm. And he's going for a Reaper and a factory behind it as well. Most likely we'll be seeing some kind of Hellion Reaper strategy, but it also could be some Widow Mines very early on. And potentially if he's super based, he might even go for cloaked Widow Mines off of one base. For a second, that could be extremely <laughs> lethal. For a second, I thought you were going to say, if he's based, he'll go for Cyclones. And I'm like, Gemini, I don't want to cast <laughs> with you anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, I said based as a way to describe cloak mind drops. And I you know, I, I already want to regret or just you know, take back everything I said. And it could be fun. Everything I, and all things Protoss right now is, is, is like. I'm trying to remember, but I think it might have actually been Bunny on Ocean. I could be totally off base with this, but it might have been Bunny on Oceanborn in a previous GLSL season that went for really fast cloaked Widow Mind drops into battle cruisers or something like that in oh. the TVP. I'm pretty sure that was a build. Oh. This could just be a fever dream that I had a couple of nights that's ago. Just, when that's I just your average day on ladder <laughs> that you just thought was a real game. <laughs> uh, but no, it will just be a cyclone opener here for Bunny. Is this adept coming in actually finding some good value? Is able to get the SCP, but unfortunately the follow-up shade 
Not going to be there in time, so he's going to get the best possible trade he can against Cyclone to pick off one more SCV. And actually, I missed this on the production tab. It's a Phoenix opening here for Classic, and that is an interesting choice here for me. Now, for a long time, Phoenix was one of those viable openers that you would go to if you saw the Terran base, the Terran go for the really fast wall off there, the main base expansion, because it almost always telegraphs a two gas opening with a late expansion. And Phoenix, generally good against everything they're going to throw at you. If they have Cyclones, at least pre patch you'll be able to, you know, pick them up with a Graviton Beam, get some damage done. If they go in with a drop, you could, of course, lift the Widow Mines, you can kill the Medivac. Kind of a really good all around unit to dealing with that. But since the change with a patch, you don't see Phoenix as a response to Cyclones quite as much anymore because they just pack so much more firepower. Is kind of a, a standard battle unit in the early game, especially before you get Immortals out, before you have Stalkers with Blink that are really able to maneuver across the map. So Classic going a little bit old school here with this opening. And thus far, it's been working quite well. Bunny really doesn't have the kind of setup back at home to deal with it. And a really fast Robo Bay too, even before the third base here for Classic. Yeah, he actually does like to go for this. It's it's He's like one of the only Protosses, I feel, that actually goes for Phoenix Colossus very regularly. Even all, I looked at the, the qualifier games as well that he was playing leading into this. Uh, he played against Maru and did it both games against Maru in the qualifiers for GSL. So he actually loves going for Phoenix Colossus, but you know, like you said, it's, it's kind of strange because it's been kind of phased out essentially. Most of the European Protosses and, and whatnot are really favoring the blink openers and whatnot, but he really just loves, absolutely loves going for Phoenix Colossus on essentially any map. And I mean, it's it shows pretty decent success for him at times, but at other times it feels like it's just, you know, maybe there's a reason why no one else is going for this <laughs> strategy. But I mean, let's see what, where it goes in this game. It's, it's still, you know, very early. Not much has happened yet. We haven't seen any crazy engages, no super early aggression or anything. So the Phoenix will still be pretty decent to be able to deny any sort of early harassment. What medevacs getting uh, thrown across can easily get picked off and stuff like that. But we just haven't really seen that much from Bunny. He's been playing very passive. Uh, so it's going to be really a mid-game focused game this this time. Yeah, and for Bunny, with no thir third command center just yet, he is absolutely gearing up for a timing attack. And I'm wondering whether he's going to try and queue this one up with plus one infantry weapons. I think this drop might barely get there once it's finishing. Might be just a hair early as he is now boosting across the map. And with only a handful of Phoenixes out on the map, it's not too scary here for Bunny, and he actually is going to be catching this move out with the Phoenixes. Of course, Phoenix is an excellent unit for scouting as well if you are able to keep them alive and not fly them over the Marines like I often very want to do. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Classic realizes that there's no medevacs here with this push out. Mm. I think that should be a pretty big key in the fact that there should be something else on the map. Realizes it now, brings the Phoenixes back with a Stalker Warp in as well, but not quite in time to be able to get all the units from unloading. Does pick up one of those Widow Mines, which is pretty decent. And now with these units getting warped in here, should be able to help shave off some of these Marines and will push this back. Uh, it loses, I think, a Phoenix and a half. We're gonna lose maybe the second one on the back end here. So forced to recall as well onto the third base. A bit of a scrappy situation as Bunny now punishes from the bottom side with this other reinforcement. But these Colossi are still very strong. They can deal a lot of damage to these low Marine counts basically no cover for them, so some probes getting pulled there, and this is really a bare-bones defense here for Classic. He has oh. the Immortal to deal with the Marauders, but they're sprinting forward regardless. Both Colossi get taken down. That Immortal has almost no HP, and this is one of the cruxes of going for this build here, as Classic is, he has, I think, only two gateways. There's very little support for these high-tech units, and unless the engagement that he gets is basically, by the book, a miracle engagement, it's going to be a really tough situation because Bunny, especially with these low unit counts, he can absolutely nullify some of the splash damage here with some good splitting. Phoenix is going to lift up one Marauder and one Cyclone, taking a substantial amount of DPS away from this army, but with no shield battery, those Marauders are going to get another Colossus. And I don't know if Classic is going to be able to stabilize. He has two Stalkers and one Phoenix. The shield battery only just now completing. I think this third base is going to be forfeit, and unless we have at least the Colossus is about to pop, and yes, it finally does. I mean, that's the only attacking unit he has right now besides these two Stalkers that just warped in. Yeah, this is uh, a slow and steady burner here for Classic. I mean, 
losing all of the probes at this third base as well. The one thing that was going for him was that he had an incredible 60, uh, 60 probe economy behind all this, but now also losing that, trying to get on top of some of these units, but you're stepping so far forward as the Protoss are trying to defend this third base with no battery support, nothing there. Bunny takes a very swift first game in this series. Yeah, and I, I feel like Classic had all of the tools at his disposal to hold on to that. But I love how you caught. You were wondering if he noticed that there weren't any medevacs with the army. And I, I feel like if he had known, if he had caught that a little bit earlier, if he identified there weren't any medevacs, then suddenly he has a chance to actually intercept in the main base. But when you have two gateways, you don't really have the main advantage you have as Protoss, you know, warp gate as a mechanic, being able to warp in a handful of units in the main to actually stop a dropship like that. and. Bunny hitting even before plus one finishes was able to get so much damage done and it just snowballed from there so hard. If you're going to run that kind of composition as classic, you have to have basically a perfect engagement and he did not get it. Yeah, and it's just also the problem with this strategy on some of these maps. Classic's been running it on so many different maps. These maps are small. It's very right. easy to suddenly get punished out of nowhere. And that is what we kind of just saw that game. These are. It was a very swift attack. He got out of position once, and that was it. Can he do it in game number two? Will it be the same strategy? Let's find out. I wonder whether Classic is going to go for the same opening here against Bunny because here in Solaris, you know, it does. It is a little bit of a bigger map, but you have those high, high speed. I don't even know what to call them. The speed zones speed in the zones. center of the map, and that can what? be a little bit tricky. It's what, what, what did Tezos used to call them? The Wubulas or something like that? What, what did he call them? What, did he call them that with no, me? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it was like a while ago, like when they first got introduced. Like there was something like that. They were like the I don't know some. Some weird word. <laughs> just it's make tasteless. Any sense. I don't know, man. Go through the Wubulus. I think that's when they were the slow zone still. I don't know if they ever came up with the name for the speed yeah, zone. Slow zone. I, I could see that being a Wubula. Yeah. Just, what's a speed zone then? I'm not even going to go down that road, man. I'm not <laughs> as I'm not as quick on my feet as tasteless road poses would be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, classic here. Getting ready to throw down that Nexus quite soon. Seven eggs score four first. I, I like that he sent that probe down to the natural expansion just to check for anything hairy Bunny might be throwing at him. You can see a little bit of paranoia right there in terms of preparation because Bunny, Bunny, there's a reason why, you know, over the past couple of years, he is consistently making it to the top eight, to the top fours of GSLs you know, seemingly every single year because he is not just a well-rounded player, but kind of still in Amaru, he is very good at preparing for a best of X series. I mean, he has a wide range of builds he can throw at you. He is not afraid to whip out the cheese when he needs to. Oh, yeah. And as a player like Classic, especially after losing map number one, you really have to be quick with your your scouting. You have to be fast thinking if you are going to go up against that kind of thing. So a little bit of proactivity there for the Protoss player trying to catch wind of any cheekiness the Terran might throw at him. But as it is right now, Bunny opening with a relatively standard Whoa, scratch but that. greedy opening. <laughs> oh, fast 3cc coming out, dang. Alpha of Marines as well, so not even a Reaper to get a scout off. So he's just going full on onto this. And a fast Robo from Classic as well. This is absolutely not the interaction that I was expecting to see. There's plenty of different things that this could go into. It could be Colossus Drop, it could be uh, Disruptor Drop, it could be some kind of weird, like, Warp Prism Immortal push or something, like, that just completely busts open a fast expand. Like, if you go for 3 CC like this, you, I can see a world where he just randomly makes a Warp Prism and just floats units into the main and then suddenly is able to do a lot of damage. This is a, a pretty wacky way to open this game. I'm really curious what exactly the plan is for Classic here. Because if this is also going to be, oh my, what? I think it's a just Stargate afterwards. I think it might be just another way of. He's getting... just doing Phoenix Colossus, but the opposite way. So Colossus Phoenix. Yeah, Colossus <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> what in the world is oh, this? Oh, actually, I'm looking at this now. He's getting an observer out. So one of the issues, if you go for the Stargate first, as opposed to mm. the robotics facility, is you're pumping out the Phoenix, yep. and as soon as the Robo is done, 
you immediately need the Robo Bay. You immediately need to start Colossus production. And you don't really have any window with that Robo to actually get Observers out onto the field, really. And so I'm wondering whether this is a way for Classic to get one, maybe two Observers out before the Robo is really about to go into its you know, absolutely optimal production timings where it's either making Colossus or Disruptors. Yeah, it's, so, like, it's just getting this Observer out really fast, too. Right across the map, we'll be able to get a scout off very early comparatively than what you would normally do. And yeah. it also allows you to then keep the Phoenixes at home, because sometimes if you go for the Phoenix opener, you might feel tempted to throw the first one across as a scout to see what's happening. That's another mm -hmm. way you can play it. But doing it now with an Observer allows you to keep the Phoenixes back at home and allow it to be... Uh, it, it punishes the, the, the Terran if they don't realize that and just throw a meta back at you. Also being able to see this... Like, he's going to probably see this Observer, is Bunny. And so now he's looking at this, scans it, kills it. He's like, whoa, whoa, my opponent went Robo first? That's strange. Definitely yeah. doesn't have a Stargate-producing Phoenix behind this. There's no way, right? But he does, and that's something that is just not standard. You don't normally go Robo into Stargate. That's just not how it's usually done. Yeah, it's an interesting little mix-up right there, but I, I have to say for Classic, from his perspective, it might be one of those moments where you scout the opponent's base with the Observer and your stomach drops a yeah, little bit because... Yeah. Observers are not the fastest unit. You get them after the robotics. It's not something that's going to, you know, pump out like a Phoenix and you chrono it cross map, but then suddenly you immediately get the scout off. And so he realized this was 3cc once the 3cc was basically done and pumping SCBs. Right? So Did he see the 3rd CC? He, he did see it, it yes. Okay. So it, was, it was revealed to him. Okay, that's fair. It was revealed, but at the same time, there isn't much of an opportunity here for Classic to capitalize unless he goes really high-octane aggression, which he might do with these pylons getting thrown across the map. But if you're just trying to macro out of this as Protoss, then suddenly you're in this scary position where, you know, if you're going to play defensively on three bases, then you know that Terran is going to have a massive amount of bio and a really clutch timing attack should they go for it. So Classic instead going to be doing the opposite. Warps in a couple of sentries, continuing Colossus, Colossus production, has that Thermal Lance. And he's going to try and delay this third command center from landing at the third for as long as possible, even dropping a pylon where oh. it would land. It does block it. There's another one down here. Does he? Oh my god, he, he went between both of Oh, but there's a third. How many pylons are there on the map? Oh my god, he really wants to see where this is. Look at him. He's trying to dance between all of them. And he actually gets in between all three. Imagine that. You put three pylons in the bottom of the map to try and scout a drop, and he dodges all three of them. That's not a huge investment. But stats actually, re or, sorry, classic, <laughs> not wrong for us, player. Classic realizes that that unit, the army is gone. We'll actually jump on these units. This is very risky for Bunny. Oh. His army is not large, and this is a really random attack for classic. Given the fact that he did scout that third CC, is why he is here in the first place. But this is super risky here for Bunny. The double drop now getting into the natural, but there should be a recall ready, an instant recall as well from Classic. So this will get shut down. Will he be able to get a Colossus before it's able to get to the battery? Yeah. Yes, so that's a pretty good pick for Bunny, but is he gonna suicide all the units for that? He has to, there's two Phoenix here, so everything will get traded out. Bunny actually, interestingly, focusing down the probes there, is able to get eight worker kills in total, so only a marginal lead here for Classic after all is said and done. And I think the uh, the attack is just going to resume yet again. Classic is once again using that warp prism, or the, the pylon, excuse me, to start warping in Zealots on the other side of the map. And he wants to levy more pressure here on this third base, but this is not an all-in. Twilight Council and Forge getting built behind this. Surely more upgrades will be coming in here shortly for the Protoss player, but at this stage in the game, of course, no blink does just have to eat this shot right there. Oh. That was a pretty good one, but I mean, this is like, this is a, such a strange attack here from Classic. Force Field's also kind of wild there. Doesn't actually get anything. Kind of a waste Ooh. of energy. Forcing himself through the speed zone. Now getting a little bit surrounded almost. Like yeah. the bio unit's getting a sick concave all of a sudden. But the Colossi untouched as there's the Vikings focused onto the Phoenix here. But the bio unit's still trying to trade out versus the ground units of the Protoss. But somehow it seems like Protoss is actually managing to win this fight. It looked super scrappy, and without a Warp Prism here to reinforce, I'm actually surprised that he was able to just push on through here. Now this is getting really awkward for Bunny to defend. Forced to gimp, keep his SCVs away. Might even have to just lift off this CC as well. Yeah, he only has a handful of bio units right now as he's trying to get the Viking count high enough to start pushing away these Colossi, but Command Center will get lifted. Oh, oh. SCVs getting pulled. Those Colossi just absolutely melting them. Gets both Widow Mines too. 
Viking maybe a little bit too far forward. Stalker's going for it. Oh, what a hit away. They do not take it out as four more Zealots come to reinforce. And this bio is so low, Gemini. There's no medevac energy. They've all used all of their energy. These two Vikings are also pretty low. One more Phoenix coming in to help against the, but the, a couple more Vikings on the reinforcements here. With no Prism, they'll be able to juggle these Colossi. They are extremely exposed once the, the other gateway units start to die off. And now, Bunny can punch. There, there's a... <laughs> Uh, chase, I don't know what, punch? They can punch the Colossus out of the sky, apparently, I don't know. They can, uh, yeah, I don't know, take those out. So yeah, total scrappy fight. I'm not sure what was even going on there. there was a what, what, oh, that was a medevac or something. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, really yeah. a chaotic engagement there. It's hard I, to call. I, I mean, feel like Protoss is totally fine afterwards as well. Absolutely. I don't think that Classic minds losing the Colossus count because he is completely resetting the starport time and a lot of the bio here. Poor Bunny. Unless he has, you know, an absolutely dismal engagement coming in, which I don't think is possible with one century with this army. This is a relatively tight choke point right here. He can continue to push forward. And as you noted earlier, Gemini, there is no medevac energy, basically. The next stim, all these units rocket healed up, and there's only one starport. It's only making Vikings. So there aren't more medevacs in the card here as SCPs get pulled once again. And charge is actually done. Plus one ground weapon's about to complete as well. Stalkers are getting on top of the Vikings there. Two more of them are going to fall just barely. And the bio stimming forward might have just enough with a good split to take down this army as Zealots are warping in. But there's very little healing coming out from the Metamax. This damage is almost permanent damage. There's no sustain here for the bio. Bunny has to start microwing backwards and I feel like Classic is getting so close to just breaking the Terran here. These fights are so scrappy, and Classic is able to pull it out. What a wacky game this was. Yeah. Not something you normally see with this style to begin with. It's so rare that you're actually the aggressor with the Phoenix Colossus army. You're almost always the defender in these in mid games here versus Terran. So to be on the map the entire time, of course it lends, it, the reason why was because of that fast third CC and that's what kind of kickstarted all of this. But the fact that Classic, even after that drop forced him to recall, went right back across and continued to just, con just pile on the aggression. Even without a prism, he was using slow warpins from one of those pylons and he was not even thinking about making a prism. He kept rallying Colossus across the map. It's such a weird way to play it, but it ends up, ends up working I, I don't know, this was a very strange uh, style out of Classic, but I mean, gets the win, very solid. It was almost a hero-esque timing attack. If, if yeah, we were playing yeah, a yeah. hidden cup and we didn't no, know the player's he, names, I'd be no, like, yeah, that, that's, that's hero. 100% <laughs> that's hero. I would lose so much money on that bet, it would be unreal. <laughs> All like, your no, channel points. Yeah, no shot that is not hero in that game. But that was just such a scrappy game. It was oh, so weird, but third game it's going to be here, tying it up here. Very nicely done by Classic. All Let's right, see classic. what he does, has to go for this one. My turn. <laughs> I'm saying still. <laughs> it is fun casting for with the first time with a new person. Oh yeah. You know, because I do know you out of out of the game and out of casting, yeah, but. Yeah. Trying to get that chemistry right. <laughs> Trying to get the, ca <laughs> the, the the cadence of your your co-caster right yeah. off the get-go. It could be a little bit tricky. It's like, no, I want to talk now. No, you, no, you, you can talk now. <laughs> just become Canadian all of a sudden. It's like, no, you, you can you can talk now, Dave. If you want to, go ahead. I just have so much to say about that previous game. Tasteless, you're missing out. He so really true. is. He man. chose the worst series, the worst day to miss out on. Yeah. This is how we're over having fun over in wherever land he is. He's just chilling. We're watching the sickest games you've ever seen. Yeah, these are really good matches. Watch, watch Tasteless come back for Group C and Gumi Home Beyond just absolutely dumpster on your yeah. creator. Just <laughs> like, a bunch of two raxes <laughs> and just the, 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 the day is over in an hour and a half and it's like, wow, that's just like literally the quickest GSL day of all 14 years of history. Like, oh my God. <laughs> wow, thank God I came back to this day of StarCraft. Oh my uh, God. I mean, the games really have been stellar so far here. And this is only the second series of the night. It feels like we've been casting for a minute because oh, I know. I was <laughs> Dark versus stats went so long and the games were so epic but really just a fantastic treat. And Classic, I love the way that he adapted there in game number two. And I feel like it could, it was almost a by-the-book game-winning play because in that kind of situation, there is Bunny. I mean, when I'm playing PBT, I obviously don't play the level of these guys, but I do play at a relatively high level. When I'm playing, oftentimes the one unit that I'm thinking in my mind 
is the starport units. It's the medevacs, it's the Vikings, because Bio, if they don't have medevacs to support, you can trade really well with Bio. Those stims add up very quickly. And so Classic, when he went for engagements like that one, where he would just rally Colossus across the map, continue the attack pretty much no matter what, even when at one point his army was like three stalkers and a Colossus, it felt like. I, I was so sure he was overcommitting. Like, but he wasn't because he knew his opponent had to make Vikings in that position to deal with the Colossus. And there were like three medevacs all very low on energy. And as long as you keep engagement, engaging, they're never going to be able to heal the second stim. If you can prolong the fight until that second stim, then suddenly a situation where it looks like Bunny might actually have the edge if he can get a concave and come in for the fight. Those Marines are getting one or two shot by the Colossus because they're at half HP. So really just a beautiful textbook. Timing attack there by Classic is just a good read on the game as yeah. well. Just be able to make that decision. Because if you do overstep that just a little bit, which it looked like he might, that can swing on you super hard as a Protoss player. So that was just a really good understanding of just where that awkward game really was at. So very good by Classic. In this game three, he's also yet again going for the Phoenix opener. As I said, it's just something that he likes to do. And it seems like he really likes to do it today because it's literally the last five games I've seen him play in this tournament, including the qualifiers. All of them have been Phoenix openers versus Terran. Nice kill on that Reaper as well. I think there is some value, though, in, in kind of playing your own style a little bit at this level, because as you said, most people, especially the Europeans, like Max Pax, for instance, really tend to favor the Blink Stalker style. But yep. if you can mix it up and just kind of play by the beat of your own drum, the way that Classic is right now in this PBT, it can really throw your opponent off because here for Bunny, it, it might be hard for him to have found practice partners that can play this style as effectively as Classic can. It's hard to emulate because not everybody goes for Phoenix Colossus and it is one of those compositions as we saw in game number one that very quickly can just spiral out of control into a loss for the Protoss player if they it's don't very do it flimsy. perfectly. It's very flimsy. Like you can suddenly just swing a fight and it will just be a perfect defense for you. And in this, in like, if you run that back like 10 times, uh, uh, surely like half of those, you could end up actually just dying as well if the, the, the micro is correct or something, or someone's mispositioned or whatnot. So it's very finicky. It's like you can very easily just get killed at, with these early pushes. This map specifically though, I think is actually pretty decent for it. And it, like once you actually get that three base set up, it's, it becomes very difficult for the Terran player to actually punish you. And it's very good defensively for that regard. What you know, leading up to that point again is the problem. Is the problem so similar to Oceanborn? We need to see if Bunny can make some kind of early strike to really just blow all the wind out of the sails of Classic before he can get everything set up. Classic continuing to power that robotic bay nearly completion. Did train one immortal similar in game number one before going into that Colossus tech, which surely will fire up in any second now. And Bunny. About as standard as it gets in terms of a two-base play. He has not yet thrown down that third command center, which makes me think that like, more akin to game number one, we are going to see him go for a similar type of pressure here. Perhaps trying to find a timing where it lines up just about there with plus one. And it might be these first two medevacs that kind of key him in on going for the aggression. And this looks almost identical in terms of opening to what we saw there on Oceanborn. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to go back to the one that won it. I mean, it was a, yeah. such a solid, convincing win from Bunny. Like, why not try it again? Even if it gets defended, it's not something that you really need to... It doesn't have to kill the, te the Protoss either. Like, he did get a third base behind it just a little bit later than what you would normally do, but it's still something that is very potent. This time, though, Classic seems a bit more well-prepared for it. Has his Phoenix back a little bit more in position. Oh. Finds the Medivax. Luckily for Bunny, the boost was still on cooldown, or off cooldown, I should say, so he was able to get away. Luckily, does not lose two Medivax full of units. So that would be absolutely tragic, but we'll be able to group everything together now. Still a lot of units for Bunny, but Classic got a pretty decent setup here defensively. He's not getting pulled apart like he did in that game one. Yeah, and he has four force fields worth of energy here on the top of the ramp if he decides to you know, forego Guardian Shield. So that is a very tough position for Bunny to break. And the window where Classic's army composition is exceptionally vulnerable is starting to pass because now he has two Colossus out. Those sentries are continuing to build energy. Thermal Lance is 10 seconds away from completion. And once all these critical upgrades come in here for Classic, then suddenly it feels like his army can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe here 
with Bunny. Now poking a little bit forward, able to get a Marauder right there at the lift. And it's these little tiny pickoffs as classic that can really start to add up. I think if Bunny wants to get a good engagement here on the Protoss player, it's going to have to come from a big drop play. And we see him gearing up for that right now. These four medevacs pivoting down to the south, but the Adept oh is going God. to spot it. I mean, just the game sense coming in there from Classic. He has five Phoenix, so they have to drop. And Classic might pounce on this with force fields if he decides to do so. Oh. Yeah, he sections off the army. They have to retreat to the corner. The one of my shots, not the best. Able to get a couple of units. Meanwhile, a counterattack here. The natural expansion will be defused by two Colossus and a handful of Zealots. And Classic so far not taking much damage. A couple of probes will go down here in the natural expansion, but Bunny, he's losing Metavax, he's losing Bio, and he has yet to find that critical opening. Classic is stabilizing. That was an excellent defense there from Classic. Again, getting Metavax in the back end. He's going straight into Fleet Beacon, by yeah. the way. This is an incredibly early transition. Something he likes to do, but under this much aggression, to already go for this is kind of insane. These units Bunny, are dead. It, this is such a committed play by him. He's really trying to get this damage done, but all these Colossus swipes are getting huge amounts of damage, continually trying to pull Classic away. But there's so many Phoenixes on top of these Metavacs. Sure, there's a couple Marauders in this third base, but is that going to be the thing that's going to pull it completely break classic here i don't think so 16 probes were killed off during all of that though i think a widow mine shot was in there was. somewhere that might have hit something big which is very good for bunny he absolutely needed that because before that was happening he was not getting the damage done that was not what you were looking for as the terran player classic was on top of that losing seven medevacs though is something very notable here for bunny yeah, he, he still has four medevacs on the map, but that means that he has no Vikings on the field at all. That's four all. Colossi. Yeah, I, I feel like Classic with his counterattack might just do it. Buddy really overextended with that drop in the main base against five Phoenix. And yeah, the third base instantly getting, li getting lifted off. Force Fields didn't catch quite all the SCVs, but I mean, Classic fighting in from this position. This is one of the natural expansions that Colossi are excellent at attacking into. It's one of the reasons why Hero, when we say, see him play PVT, loves to go for Colossi timing attacks on this map because look at the arc here. If you want to actually pounce on these Colossus with a ground army, you have to go through that little tiny choke point. Meanwhile, Classic can just poke and prod forward. All the supply depots are here. Two barracks are here. The second starport is here. And Bonnie's infrastructure is just getting absolutely decimated by these Colossi. And I don't see a world, unless he can somehow EMP the sentries, that he can actually push forward and stop this. And Classic is pulling back. That's, that's, it looks weird <laughs> because it's I like, am surprised. Because it's like, wow, there's nothing to do with these Colossi right now. But also, why should he do that? Mm. Why should he attack? He's got carriers on the back end at 10 minutes in a PVT, denies a third base, knows that his opponent is completely on the defensive and says, you know what? No, this is how I actually possibly lose this game. Right here, if I just go in too far and it's an overextension, I am gonna take the safe play. I'm gonna come back, get my carriers, max out. That's a solid play out of Classic right there. He sure, maybe he could have gone for that. An SE, a, a CC lift with an SCV pull or something, that mm -hmm. could swing fast. He doesn't exactly know. So I think this is a solid play. Cause look at that army. Yeah. How is that going to die to this little thing? It's He's up 40 supply. I, I think the only way is a Doom Drop that pulls Classic dismally out of position and then somehow gets out of there. But there's Phoenixes on the map. How, that's not going to happen. I'm sure plus one air weapons is going to be underway here soon as well. And Buddy's army just straight up does not beat this. If the EMPs are perfect, I, I could see a world. This Maybe. drop is excellent. I love this as well. Knows exactly this army is super far out on the map. Look at this bunny. He's pulling oh. back. Oh my god, that's so much time bought. And even going to recall the prism so it gets back home so he could do it again a little bit later. This is excellent by Classic here. Just pulling bunny as thin as can be, knowing that he's, he's, he's essentially on two bases. That third base is landed, but there's nothing there. Yeah, there's this still is so well done. I mean, the, the main anti-air here, besides this handful of Vikings for Bunny, is just Marines, which are going to get obliterated by the Colossi. We even have Templar on the field now. All right, EMP comes in, gets a ton of the Stalkers. But the Stalkers are doing a good job of pushing away the Vikings. And the Stutter Step Micro, really not good with Vikings in this kind of situation, as the Phoenix now are going to come forward. They're trying to catch the rally there on the Vikings, but a little bit too late. And again, it's just a handful of medevacs. I think we only have four in total, as Bunny is forced to make Vikings. So 
even after that stim, the Benevax with high energy are struggling to do anything. Guardian Shield pops yet again, and the Phoenix are coming in. Classic really wants this engagement. The Colossi are getting so much damage done. The Stalker is eventually trading out. There's no ground army left for Bunny. GG is called, and Classic has defeated Bunny 2-1, to one, going to the winner's match. We're going to have a PvP. It's a what? PvP winner! What year is it? What are we doing? This is not what's supposed to happen. We have two Protosses advancing to the winner's match. And both of them are players that I think, especially, I mean, the first one, especially, Sats versus Dark, is not one we expected to get there. Classic, we could sure see it, for sure. But, wow, what an amazing situation that we have here. Two Protoss players are now going to be fighting in the winner's match to possibly get out first in the group. This is an exciting refreshment. I love this. This is great. I want to see more. Yeah, and... Let me tell you, those were not cheekies either. Stats and Classic have been playing out of their minds today. And you know, Dark and Bunny eventually, one of them is going to be knocked out in the elimination match, which blows my mind. Guys, we're going to go to a short break. When we get back to the winner's match, Classic versus Stats. Did not expect to say that. We will see you in a minute. Comes back around, comes back around. 